The ABS have just released inflation figures, or more accurately, they've released um, their preferred measure of inflation, which is the Consumer Price Index, or the CPI. And the CPI basically measures all the goods that an average household buys. There are tens of thousands of goods, um, and they're weighted depending on how the average household buys them. So if the average household spent 15% on groceries, then groceries would make up 15% of the CPI. If they spent 30% on accommodation like rent, then rent would make up 30% of the CPI. And basically every quarter, the ABS measures how these prices have increased and mash it together to give us the average increase in prices for the average household. Now, these figures were particularly high this quarter. In fact, the uh, inflation rate increased at 5.1%, which is the fastest rate it's increased since the introduction of the GST. So the consumer price index increased by 5.1% over the last year. And this is far faster than how fast wages are increasing. Wages have only increased by 2.3% over the last 12 months. This means that the amount of stuff that the average household can buy is going down. That is, the kinds of things they're buying are going up in price faster than their incomes are increasing. Economists call this the real wage, and at the moment, real wages are going down. Now, while the average increase in prices is 5.1%, the ABS actually splits all of those goods and services into essential and non-essential goods. Now, essential goods are the kinds of goods that you need to buy. Things like groceries, uh, accommodation, electricity and power. Um, and they are increasing far faster than non-essential goods. So while the average increase in prices is 5.1%, the increase in essentials is 6.6%, significantly higher than the average. And this is important for low income households. Low income households spend a far larger proportion of their income on the essentials. This means that the income of the inflation faced by low income households is more like 6.6% rather than 5.1%. Now, this big increase in inflation has caused a lot of speculation that the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, is going to increase interest rates. The Reserve Bank doesn't like inflation, and the way that it tries to dampen down price increases is by increasing interest rates. How does this work? Well, basically, about 37% of households have a mortgage. Now, if the RBA increases interest rates, then all of those households have got to spend more money on interest payments, which means they have less money to spend on everything else. So the point of increasing interest rates is actually to make everybody poorer so they can't buy other stuff. And if they're demanding less stuff, then those prices can't increase as quickly because there's less demand for them. This also creates more unemployment. So if there's less demand for the stuff in the economy, then they need less people to make it, which means unemployment is likely to go up. Now, this is quite interesting at the moment because in the, we've got both parties running around saying that they want to increase employment. But if the RBA is putting up interest rates, they're effectively saying they think that unemployment is too low. This creates an interesting situation where we might have the government trying to decrease the unemployment rate and at the same time the RBA is trying to increase the unemployment rate to dampen down demand. And so that's effectively like driving the car with your foot on the accelerator and the brake at the same time. So the latest ABS figures show inflation is rising faster than at any time in the last 20 years. Uh, this means that uh, particularly low income households are really going to feel the pinch. And it could also mean that the RBA puts up interest rates which will hurt mortgage holders. Thanks for watching. If you want more content, please subscribe to our channel and hit that like button.